morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Wednesday morning. Welcome to Hacking Self Storage. So, um, last week, my well, the last two weeks, my best performing LinkedIn post was something about increasing prices and revenue management. And I don't think I've articulated it in this way. And it's so crucially important. I was having this conversation with my friend in the gym today, well, when I'm recording this, and it's was a very, very simple method, but we've got to start acting like a big company. This isn't the post yet, by the way, but this is just giving you some insight into the post. We've, in self-storage operators, we've got to start thinking and acting like a big company if we want to maximize our profits. And there's, it's almost like we need to be apologetic for wanting to maximize our profits. I do. I want to maximize my profits. I'm not a bad guy. I want to maximize my profits and make the most possible can do so I can grow. And ultimately, I want to do good money, but it's, it's not about that. Um, right now. It's about maximizing my profits and we shouldn't feel bad that we want to maximize and maximize the profits, maximize the revenue and do revenue management. But so many people I speak to feel bad about this and it sparked a massive debate, not a massive debate, 33 comments. So not a huge debate, but a bit of a debate and people texting me saying, you know, different things. And it was so interesting. But my opinion is that we've got to start acting like a big company. Like I was talking to my friend today, Sky, they, what do they do with existing customers? They put the prices up. What does insurance companies do? If they don't make money off year one, when you first go there, it's an introductory offer. They make money off your year two, year three, year four, year five, and year six. Um, gas prices, electric prices. We've got to start thinking like these big boys because why? That's how we're going to grow. That's how we're going to maximize our profits. So here's the post. Ever wonder how REITs increase their profits? By the way, REITs are the very, very big boys in America. Um, here's a simple revenue management system. Jane becomes a customer on 1st of July, 2022. Jane gets a 10% increase on the 1st of October, 2022. Then Jane gets a further 6% increase on the 1st of July, 2023. So Jane's been in self-storage for 12 months and had two price increases. On the 1st of July, 2022, Jane was paying £100. On the 1st of July, 2023, Jane is paying £116.60. That's a 16 0.6% increase in 12 months. The formula is simple. 10% increase after three months. 6% increase every nine months until the day you move out. Self-storage is a brilliant business model, but is this approach too aggressive? What's your opinions? Now, you all know my opinions. I don't think that's too aggressive. I know I know people who are too aggressive in, in my personal opinion it works for them and it's just it's just not right for me but do i think this is too aggressive no i think this is behaving like a big boy acting like a big boy and i know some reits are more aggressive than this and if i'm honest way more aggressive than this right now i think i think we do increase 10 percent in the first three months but is it six percent um yeah, is i actually i think i think we're nearly bang on that it might be just a couple of percent difference but we're nearly bang on this I, what I want to get across, you're not ba a bad person for revenue management. I always remember one one inc uh, one uh, podcast interview I did when I was doing podcast interviews, and I need to get back to them. I really did enjoy them, but it's just for me having something in my diary, a, a time when I've got to be there at some place. I just don't, I don't like it. Um, but I will get back to it. I remember one interview I did, and I'm not, I'm not going to say any names because I, I don't think it's right or wrong. It's just an opinion. Um, and it really got me thinking. Did this gentleman, and he said that he doesn't like price increases because he doesn't think it's fair on the customer. And all of all, all, all of a sudden, it sent me my world into turmoil because I was like, holy shit. Does that mean I'm a bad person? Does that mean I'm taking advantage of people? Because all of a sudden, I, in my head, I've got me, uh, what I think of myself is a really nice person, look after the customers, put customers first. And all of a sudden, I was thinking, well, wait a second. Is that all true? If you, if you, If this gentleman's right, and if he's thinking that, no, we need to look after our current customers, am I wrong? Because I'm not looking after my current customers. Oh, I am looking after my current customers, but I'm I'm increasing their profit. I'm, I'm increasing their revenue. And how I got myself out of this, this flunk thinking, no, do you know what? The price you come into storage isn't the price that it really is in my head. I want to charge you more than that. The street rate is just the introductory offer. If you take advantage of the introductory offer and don't stay for a year or two, then you will never pay the 
street rate, the official rate that I want you to pay. And so the street rate, and there's a rate that I want to get you to. And that's why mature sites under my watch and leadership will always make more money, will always have a better price per square foot the more mature the facility is. The younger the facility is, obviously that that revenue management hasn't come into place yet. But the mature the facility is, like Beverly, for example, I think we're getting like 24 quid for an outdoor storage facility. 24 pound per square foot is bananas. But we're getting it. Why? Because it's 11 years old. Because of revenue management. We've chained it and chained it and chained it. We've put revenue management in place and now we're reaping the, the benefits. Was it that when we first started? No, because customers were coming in and we wasn't getting them long-term customers. Our long-term customers are the ones that are going to be paying the rate that we want them to pay. And when you first come in, it's not like that. And even now, even now I find myself justifying myself to, to, to you listeners. And, but because, because I'm thinking of this one person, that he's, he's, it made me feel like I was, I was doing something wrong, but we, Making profit, making money, having a strategy, having a revenue management in place is not wrong. And we shouldn't be demonized for it. And it was so good listening to all the comments. And some people thought it was too aggressive. Some people, uh, I think people outside storage thought it was too aggressive, but people inside storage was backing me. And I got so many private messages as well saying, we do, we do more than that. We do this, we do that, we do this. And so there's so many people who do more than that. But when you look at it from an outsider's point of view, you're increasing the price 60. It's almost like, you can see where people are coming from because it's almost like, hey, listen, come in, have it for this price. But what I'm not going to tell you at the time you come in, I'm not going to tell you that really, I'm going to give you a 17% increase in the first year. And that's just, that's behind the T's and C's that we do price increase. I'm not going to tell you. I can see that. I get that argument. I can see that argument so crystal clear. But we have to start behaving like a bigger company. And I thought it was, if I do say so myself, I thought it was a really good post because it breaks it down nicely. And you see what Jane is paying on day one. And then you see what she's paying exactly a year later, how much her storage is. Um based on a fictitious amount of £100. Obviously, it'd be $100. I should have put $100 because it's in America, and I was using REITs as an example. But this is how self-storage and why self-storage is such a, such a fantastic business model. It really is a terrific business model and something that I, 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 I love. And like I put in my newsletter, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, mrselfstorage.com, hit Get, go, hit it. What? Don't, don't hit it. Um, go across there and put your email address in and I'll send you a daily email. Well, six days a week. Uh, Sundays, I have a lion. It takes me a long time to do it. We've got memes. We've got industry news. Uh, Self-storage porn, by the way, on Tuesday when this comes out. Yeah, Tuesday. Um, some really good industry news every single day, um, which I break down for you. And then we've also got my... Um, information that I get every, my, how much we've invoiced at the daily blah, 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 figures, uh, conversion rates, move-ins, reservations, et cetera, for all four sites. So yeah, it re, I, I love it. I love doing it. it. takes a lot of time. And so far we've had, we've, yeah, it's been good. So yep, yeah, that is today's uh, podcast. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for taking the time to, to listen to me rub it on. It, it's wonderful. Um, I'm in over a thousand people's, um, newsletters every single week, uh, inbox, inbox. It, it's terrific and I love it. All right, my friends, thank you so much. I appreciate you and uh, I will see you uh, on Friday, on Friday because um, I'm away for a night with a wife and so I won't get to do one on Thursday. Um, so yeah, I'll see you Friday, my friends, when I'll try and finally do a podcast about the acquisition because um, I've got so much to tell you, so much to tell you. All right, my friends, love you, appreciate you and I'll see you on Friday.